I just want to begin with a little bit of a background. And um, first of all, uh, I'm sorry I could not make it to your conference in, uh, uh, in Italy last week, I guess, uh, or a week ago, uh, a week before last. But, um, you, you know, I want, to, I want to step back and explain to you what India believes in, uh, uh, in the digital governance and the digital economy. And I'll take two or three minutes to explain um, how we have leapfrogged into the digital age, really, the fourth industrial revolution. And, and then really how does MyGov and everything else around participative governance, crowd, crowd policy comes in. So, you know, 2014, when the new government came into place, digital became a, a, a mainstream mission mode program. The program, the, the big program is called Digital India. And it embarked upon a journey which, which really solves three problems. Uh, to create the digital infrastructure. So uh, in, in a way that digital infrastructure, both connectivity and as well as uh, infrastructure around open innovation, open platforms, which can then be used for solving a lot of problems in India. And so that was a really the building the highways, the infrastructure. Then the second part of the Digital India program was to do what is called building, uh, you know, training the drivers and building the cars. So we started a massive movement to build hardware in India, to build smartphones, first of all, in India, to build mobile phones in India, and uh, do a huge program around digital literacy, cyber literacy. And then third is where we come in, is now once you have infrastructure, uh, you have open innovation and uh, open data, you have trained resources, you have drivers who can drive you on that highway, where do you go? How do you consume? So what are the destinations? And for destinations we created, I mean, of course, apart from startups and digital consumption of services and governance and a lot of other things, some of which we'll talk today, payments and digital economy, we also said one of the big pillars, the Prime Minister's vision was, has to be digitally empowering participative governance, taking governance to every nook and corner of India. And today, with the platform, it's no longer just a website. Today, with the platform that we have, I'm happy to say that we have a platform which engages, which, which improves government communication, and it's an ever-evolving process, and also uh, makes government understand, again, crowdsource ideas, policies, feedback. Uh, the prime minister's and the government's vision is now policy making needs to be really agile. Governance is very agile. There's a, there's a election in double quotes, means of voting happening every one hour on, on the digital media, social media. So how do you use the, the, the crowd creativity of this or the creative power of this, uh, this medium uh, to solve a lot of issues, to understand the pulse of the nation, rather than wait for it every five years, but which is the electoral process. So that's the basic thing. Uh, I will go to my, uh, and I have very few slides, but just bear with me on that. I, I want to bring out that this is the snapshot of digital India today. This is India's digital DNA. A, a billion, 1.2 billion mobile connections, out of which, about 40% are internet users, smartphone users. About 400 million social media users. And if you include things like WhatsApp, I think it's one-to-one -one correlation. So social media is pure social media, not the messaging platforms. The interesting things are two other, two other parts, which is now 1.19 billion and probably 1.2 billion Indians today have a digital identity. That's the Aadhaar program. It's, it's, in, it's completely ubiquitous in adult population, 99% plus coverage. And India today has 500 million bank accounts, unique bank account holders. And that's on an average two per family, two per household. Now this is very important because when we do build a digital economy, these are the pillars of digital economy, an identity, a mobile connection, an internet connection, a bank account to do transactions. So this will give you an idea where we have reached uh, as this point in time. And um, you know, we can talk about it in detail. 
Uh, and now I'll pivot to the discussions around participative governance, the role of MyGov in the same, and what we believe, what is the problem that we are solving? You know, one of your questions was, what is the problem that we are solving and how we are designed to solve that problem? See, we believe that, I and mean, this is just a snapshot of it, this is not a, this is not a outcome of a thesis or a research, but the, the big pillars of democracy are, of course, a transparent democracy which has the, the parties, whether it in, in, in the U.S. are Republican, Republican and the Democratic Party in India, there's a multi-party system, so we have many parties. The internal working of those parties should be, de should be modernized, should be technology enabled. The campaign finance should be made more transparent. Uh, and of course, we have a great and transparent legislative process. That's one area. The second area of work is, of course, the actual process of electioneering, which is uh, which is starts from the policy making, the voter list, to to uh, transparency in that, to actually building a trustworthy electoral process, electoral system, and casting of the votes, counting of the votes, and how the secure ballot system. Those two already exist, that and that's an ongoing process. Where we come into the picture is the third big pillar, which is the citizen engagement, uh, the, the crowd source of policy, the information dissemination. We believe that, the, uh, you know, while a lot of governance is happening, we need to take constant feedback from citizens, whether they're getting governance, whether it's scheme, welfare, or services, or just basic amenities that they're paying taxes for, um, and keep getting a constant feedback from them. Uh, that's that's the the very important part of it. And if schemes that that the government is implementing are not reaching because of a gap in communication, ensure that the gap in communication is is reduced so that the schemes which are which are intended for a certain section of society are reaching them, or the schemes are you know with the feedback are designed better. So both the communication and design of the schemes to engaging citizens in in uh, in uh, in, in feedback, in, in, um, in uh, giving ideas, in making policy. So it's a complete process of being a constant engagement. It's a listening, engaging, informing, and responding. A process of doing that around governance. And the big vision of participative governance really comes in here, which, which basically says that we don't want uh, a few people to decide policy a few people to 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 really uh, you know in in a room to dictate what should be the the uh, shape of um, a particular policy or a vision of new india india is far too diverse and big and ideas are from anywhere from the north to the south to the east to the west that few people uh, sitting inside a room can decide so today my gov has become that pillar which actually enables participative governance uh, citizen engagement and uh, crowdsource policy making and all is part of that. And um, so if you ask me three big things that we do is uh, participative governance, uh, uh, citizen uh, feedback and uh, information dissemination. And this is the role that we have been playing. And you know we can uh, dive uh, deep into this. And in this process, this uh, MyGov has become a platform of choice across departments, across ministries, across the primacy users is very often, and uh, we can discuss a few examples. But the perfect examples are that we actually, this has been a platform which is, and I'll start with a small example because that's a very relevant example. When we launched this platform in 2014, uh, India also simultaneously launched one of the big schemes, what is called the Swachh Bharat scheme, which was a mission to make India cleaner you know, uh, open defecation free, for example, was, was a mission statement. Uh, toilet in every home. Uh, the whole theme and the logos for, and, and the general process of a government is you, you know, you do a tender, you do an RFP, and it goes out, some design agency comes, gives out a logo, and, uh, you know, you do that. Here, the logo was crowdsourced. Uh, so the contest got announced on, on MyGov. And in that contest, you know, creative people from all over the country 
gave their ideas. The best part is this community also voted for which is, which is the best amongst them. And a group of experts took that as a heavy weightage when they finally decided what to choose and what not to choose. So both crowd sourcing, but also crowd scoring was done. And then of course, one logo was picked and at, a, at probably 1% of the cost it would have, co and, and of course must squeeze time that it would have other, otherwise costed the government. The total cost to us was maybe about $1,500 to do this uh, logo design and a photograph with the Prime Minister of India, and that's it, it's done. So, um, uh, so that was real time, and, and, you know, and that's the, that's, that is how it started off. But today it's embedded into a, most of the policy decisions. We have a lot of examples we can talk about, um, but that's the kind of things MyGov does. It's, uh, you know, from communication to engagement to crowdsourcing. These are some of the numbers that we have um, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of the reach, the prime minister does a monthly radio talk to the nation last Sunday of every month. 41 of those, 41 or 42? Predita, how many uh, we have had? 41 monkey baths have uh, happened. Monkey bath is in, in Hindi means my talk from my heart. And uh, uh, it is. It is. It goes. It, it's broadcasted on the national broadcaster on the on the radio. It, it's a it's an audio program which goes throughout the country, translated into every single language. It's also available on a mobile phone, a simple mobile phone or a smartphone. People can call in and listen to the program. And um, the prime minister does not set the agenda. It's actually crowdsourced. He seeks people's opinions on what are the big issues you, you want him to talk about. So, so this last monkey bath that the Prime Minister did, uh, a, a few of the MyGov users gave an idea on, on fitness and importance of um, health and fitness in a person's life. So one of the big things that the Prime Minister talked about in his last monkey bath, which was on the 25th of March, uh, the earlier part of the week, was on Fit India it says how Fit India is more important. How we need to, you know, and he in fact um, released a 3D video uh, of him doing. Uh, I mean, it was done by a bunch of volunteers. I think very creative volunteers who also crowd uh, again. Somebody sent it to him on, um, uh, you know, how fitness is important, and he uh, he released a video of a 3D animation of him doing yoga. So that's how. Um, uh, MyGov has become integral to the, the listening mechanism, the feedback mechanism, and I'll, I'll talk about the uh, response and the engagement process. But you can see on your screen some of the uh, uh, some of the things that we have crowdsourced. I talked about the logos. I talked about monkey bath. Rate your government. We have been very open about taking feedback at the two, at the second year anniversary of the government. At the, you know we we asked everybody in the country to rate. The government on all parameters, uh, 270,000 responses. Uh, biggest, if you call approval rating data, was probably available out there. What people were liking, what people are not liking. So you can, in a way, uh, you know, course correct yourself uh, when the right time comes. You must have heard about in India uh, one of the big uh, policy uh, things around technology. India uh, did a very big discussion on net neutrality. Uh, over 70,000 comments, uh, discussion comments, ideas, uh, feedback, and, and, and submissions came on our portal, on our, on our whole website. Um, and that, that not only just was one way mechanism of seeking feedback, but finally, a lot of them made into the actual policy document. So India announced a net neutrality policy shortly after the discussion was closed and bulk of the comments were sourced from here. There was, there was of course an offline submission mechanism and email submission mechanism, but this was where the bulk of the submissions came in and, uh, uh, and you know, the policy came out. I do want to bring out that our process is also 360 degrees. We don't, we don't restrict any policy decision, any feedback, only because uh, it's on MyGov or a digital platform. It's also available on, a, as I said, people can call in 
and give feedback. So we have, you know, then voice to text translation and we try to make sure that, you know, we use technology to do that. But to the consumer, to the citizen, they have phone call available. They have still, they can do emails and the standard methods of giving feedback. That it does not go away, but we've added this new thing on top of that. So, um, you know, you can see, read for yourself a lot of other, lot of other things we did. Um, today, from a, you know, from, a, from, from what we do in terms of 360 degree engagement, one is the platforms that we do in, in, uh, that we use for engagement are all 360 degrees. So, as I said, mobile, digital, social, um, email, offline, online. But more than that, it's from ideation to creation to discussion to action, but also gratification. So citizens want to know if they gave some idea, if they, if they participated, um, uh, did that get consumed? And even a small acknowledgement matters to them. So, you know, we get ideas um, in hundreds and thousands. Not all can be implemented. Some are practical, some are not. But it gives you a general sense of what people want sometimes. But the gratification is very important. So we make sure that we gratify. Sometimes the best ideas, the best thoughts, we put them in a room with the policymakers and do a round table. And that's been the most uh, gratifying thing when people see that policymakers and common citizens are sitting on a, on a same platform around a round table and discussing thoughts. So it's, it's really integration from online to the offline world also and real world people sit together and, 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 and discuss and debate about suggestions that come in. So uh, our approach is complete 360 degrees from ideation, creation, discussion, action to gratification. I think, and that's an important thing we see, gratification is, is very, very important. Uh, I think again, some numbers, but uh, the reach is, uh, reach is uh, very, very strong. We, you wanted to know us, uh, know about us, how, um, you know, what kind of uh, 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 staff we have. We have about 75 people are across technology, content, engagement. We have, uh, we have reach across all ministries of India. Uh, we work with everybody. We work with different states. And the plan now that I have uh, just joined recently about a month ago is to reach to at least 15 to 20 states in India. India has about 30 states and about five union territories. So we will, uh, you know, 29 plus six, technically, uh, we will try to reach uh, every single state of India, uh, you know, depending on the interest. So also talk about transparency of information, of schemes, of governance. So we maintain a, a digital dashboard. This dashboard tells you uh, this particular screenshot is from March 12th, but if you go to our website, you'll have data as of yesterday. How are we doing in different sectors? Right now, we match and uh, we, we make it available to the public uh, eight different schemes which, have, which impact them, whether it's on uh, fiber connectivity to electrification to, you know, uh, to the uh, rural uh, financing scheme to uh, to the bank accounts to anything to the soiled health cards. Uh, this will this will really grow to about 30 top schemes, persona based, which Im, which impact every citizen. So women led schemes, uh, youth led schemes, farmer led schemes. People can then be able to see on a drill down a digital dashboard. So again, transparency of uh, governance in real time. Uh, one of the other things you wanted us to know, uh, talk about was what's, uh, what's been our learnings that others can learn from. And I did talk about it during my, uh, during the, you know, during the talk is that I think one of the big lessons has been 360 degrees online and offline, online, social, mobile, offline. And that connect is very important, whether that's in seeking feedback or the gratification in that whole process of engagement you have to have both components of online and offline. I'll give you one other example, and this is very important. This is very interesting. We do a lot of quizzes to do the engagement part, the gamification of governance, the gamification of knowledge of India. So India has the civilian awards like many other countries. We call them the Padma Awards. 
this time, um, Padma Awards, um, the process of Padma Awards itself gave an example of the democracy of India, but I'm not going to talk about that because uh, even the nominations were sought online for the people that you want to nominate Padma Awards. So the, no the award winners were, uh, were you know, you know, nominated by people and selected by a panel of people, 36,000 nominations and 84 people got an award. What we also did is then after the awards were announced, we announced a small quiz called the Padma Quiz, the People's Padma Quiz on the MyGov platform. And that, if you answered, you know, if you got the perfect score, you stood a chance to come and see the awards in, in the president's house, the Rashpati Bhavan, as it's called in India, live. You come there and you, you watch the ceremony live. It's, it's really a, a, a you know, historic feeling to go and see that live. So not only the award winners, but the people who are seated in that hall were selected in a, in a meritorious, democratic manner. And, uh, so, and that's the online to offline. So we conducted the quiz online, but the gratification was offline. They attended the event all, offline. So, and we believe that that brings about uh, a lot of connect. And we've never seen participation at that level. I mean, about 100,000 people participated in, a, in two rounds of quizzes. Um, what we also believe in the, in the learning side is that the content, and uh, you know, India is a very, very big country, we have to have localized content, content which is specific to, an, to a geography, to a subject, to a language. So we've, we've done a lot of things about languages and make sure that you know, multilingual uh, content is available. I talked about 360 degrees. Um, Real-time governance and you know, making information a symmetry go away has been a, a very big thing. People appreciate that. People say this is... This is where it's working. This is where it's not working. The comments, the feedback, what has been done from them is all available in a very open and transparent manner. And I think um, uh, the customization aspect of making sure that, you know, I, we showed you uh, localized um, instances of the MyGov in, in, uh, in different states of India. Uh, I think that customization for each local geography is very, very important. So those have been our learnings, uh, the 360 degree approach, offline and online, local language content, real time governance and customization. And those are something that we can, um, we can always share with everybody else. To find out more about how cities and states are using crowd law, please visit thegovlab.org or check out crowd.law.